to Nittany Nation Overtime. And welcome into Nittany Nation Overtime. I'm Jack Washer. Back to my normal spot for this week. Let's meet the panel for this week's show. We got a full one actually this week from left to right on your screen. Mark Brennan from FightOnState.com and Lions 24-7. Neil Rudell from the Altoona Mirror and former Penn State great Joe Nastasi, also <laughs> a state college football coach right now. All right, gentlemen. Penn State 0-5 for the first time in program history. And Joe, you said Penn State would run the table. <laughs> and technically they are, but I don't think this is what you were going for. Uh, yeah, you know, it, just just watching this and, and, and seeing how the season's un unfolded so far, I mean, you know, we're, we're looking at this. And you go back to game one, and, you know, we've talked about so many times, and you just feel like Indiana has now beat us five times, you know. I mean, we, we, we've you get down to the two-point conversion, they don't get that in. Uh, are we looking at a four and one season? And I know again we've gone back and forth with this, but you know th this this team is just so much lacking a uh, leader on the defense, a leader on the offense, uh, you know some creativity. Uh, you know there's so many so many parts of this that you want to sit and critique, and I don't want to be so critical of the program because there's so much more going on than any of us would really understand. And, and there's a lot of dynamics to the team that are not working well now. But I think my biggest disappointment with what's going on every single week has just been the lack of effort, you know, and the lack of playing to the end. And, you know, I think that there are some pieces that maybe, maybe some younger guys could be get in there to make the spark because they're just it's so flat and it's been repetitive I mean this is five straight weeks of the identical situation with with the with the team itself you know Joe Penn State's been on the other side of that so many times where early in the season they'll escape with a win over an app state mm -hmm. or, or somebody mm -hmm. like that and, and you're right I mean I do think that does take the wind out of the sails especially in a year like this where you lose once to Indiana and really everything that you wanted to play for was kind of out the window having said all that yep. You know, as I look at this team, the, the thing that really jumps out to me is the same things happening over and over and over again, mm -hmm. whether it's turnovers, whether it's uh, the, the, the defense giving up things early, the offensive line struggling, everything, uh, you know, miscommunication on the sidelines or, or iffy play calling. When these things are happening every single week, to me, that's a reflection of, of a team that's not prepared and not really well coached. And I think they've really had trouble dealing with what you know, Tom Allen at Indiana has done an unbelievable job. This staff and James Franklin have not handled this situation this year well at all. Yeah, and I think it's when you look at what are the, what are the clutch moments of a game? Uh, was Iowa really 24 points better than them when they were winning 31-7? Or is it because Penn State didn't make the three or four plays they needed to make when they were down 10-7 and they drop an interception uh, on the other side of the field? Or the two, or three, third, and fourth and ones when they're on the, on the Iowa side of the field and they're down 17-7. You know, they're still in the game. And I think it's those clutch moments uh, the poise to deliver the, the right call, uh, starting games, uh, those are the things, you know, sh goal line, uh, short yardage offense, last week it was the red zone, just when it comes time to win, they, they don't know how to win. Yeah, and, and, and we're going back to what we were saying earlier, you know, you're, you're talking about last December, an 11-2 and two knocking on the door of a playoff team uh, to Oh, and five right now, and, and the difference, you know, everybody can come out here and play. They all got scholarship guys. They all got athletes, and you know the difference between winning and losing at this high level, and it's it's high stakes. I mean, I think that the disappointment again for me, and I keep saying a disappointment. Another one, and I, and and being a coach myself, I don't like to be overcritical of certain situations, but um, you know, I struggle with some of the creativity in our offensive play calling, and again. I understand it from personnel, from what you have. I, I understand that we're not there, so we can't sit there and say you should have done this or that. But if you, and I always refer back to Mac games, turn on a Mac game, they may not have five-star uh, offensive linemen. They don't have everybody in place they need. However, third and one, third and two, fourth and short, they'll be creative in order to get a ball in a space. May not always work, but at least they have opportunities because they have to be creative because they don't have the horses just to push you around. Well, if you hadn't, if you didn't have enough football yesterday, you got home and you saw Michigan and Rutgers. <laughs> and to me, you know, Penn State's going to struggle to win either of those games. You saw more passion, more creativity, yeah. more engagement, 
you know, I think Penn State's going to be uh, an underdog at Rutgers. Think about that. What are the odds before the season that you could, <laughs> that Rutgers and Maryland yeah. would beat Penn State? Well, before yeah. the season, I think Penn State was favored in every game except Ohio State, even at, even at Michigan, and that's really turned on its head. And, I, Joe, I love how you keep saying earlier, this could be like a four-hour show for us because sure, even yeah. before the show, yeah. we're outside talking about, mm -hmm. about all this, and that's yeah. what all Penn State fans are talking about. Sure. This is a very tough moment for Penn State football. All yeah. right, so ahead on Indy Nation overtime, it was a different week, but we found the same problems. Is it too late to right those wrongs? We'll discuss those more in detail next. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime on WTAJ, your Nittany Nation station. Tonight's show is brought to you by Joel Comfort Toyota. Tis the season to be cheersin'. Get cheersin' with all with new holiday drinks at Dunkin'. Send a virtual cheersin' with the Dunkin' app. Where can a healthier heart lead you? For people with heart failure taking Entresto, it may lead to a world of possibilities. Entresto help people stay alive and out of the hospital. Don't take Entresto if pregnant. It can cause harm or death to an unborn baby. Don't take Entresto with an ACE inhibitor or allosteric, or if you've had angioedema with an ACE or ARB. The most serious side effects are angioedema, low blood pressure, kidney problems, or high blood potassium. Ask your doctor about Entresto. Your news every hour in prime time is on News Nation on WGN America. American veterans potentially exposed to toxic fumes. News Nation investigates why sick vets can't get the care they need and talk to John Stewart, who's fighting to help the victims. We always have money for war. We never have money for the war fighter. News Nation covers your nation every night starting at 8, 7 central on WGN America. Go to WGNAmerica.com to find WGN America on your cable or satellite provider. There's something that's missing. And uh, I want to tell you that that's something missing is, is Jesus. It was the beginning of a road of redemption for me. There's forgiveness. There's a new life. There's everything in trusting God. Just take that one step. That's all it takes. I felt like a new person, brand new creation. I felt like I had had a weight lifted off my shoulders. Watch The 700 Club weekdays. Tis the season to be cheersin'. Get cheersin' with all with new holiday drinks at Dunkin'. Send a virtual cheersin' with the Dunkin' app. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. And welcome back to the show. Now, yesterday, Pente really, really struggled with short yardage situations. You saw in third and one, fourth and one, just not able to get any push. And going up against an Iowa team, Neil, I mean, you, you kind of expect to see that because Iowa is known to be physical, but there was no counterpunch from Penn State whatsoever. Well, here's what, what I didn't understand. Okay, Ford was injured early. Uh, Kevon Lee, uh, Lee has been somewhat of a power back so far. He has mushed for short yardage first downs at Nebraska, key situation. Uh, yesterday, he, he, he scored uh, early, and he scored the first touchdown. Then they had Keziah Holmes. I'm not sure he was as quick to hit what little of a hole was there, but I thought, where was Lee in this situation? Well, I was thinking what game was the coaching staff watching because when they decided to go for it on fourth and two late in the half, this team had already struggled on third and short and fourth and short. So I get where, you know, James Franklin said he wanted to try to inject some enthusiasm. I, I understand that. Mm -hmm. But you also have to understand what your team is capable of. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you essentially have a quarterback who's not played a ton of football in, in clutch situations. And they come up with a play. And, and, Joe, you know, this is another thing we were talking about beforehand. You know, not only is do they go for it on fourth and two, but they throw a, a, a pass that – wouldn't be completed in a thousand years. Mm -hmm. What were some of yeah. the things they might have done there? Right. Yeah, and I think that was a little bit more what I was referring to. I mean, th I think to me that was that in in this game was probably the the turning point. I believe because you watched that and it was a 14 point swing like that. And and at that point in time, we just have not had the firepower and the offensive line to be able to protect and move move team move teams out of the way, uh, which you know struggle in running the football. 
But, you know, I, I watched that, and it, it, on the third down, okay, so you, you think you have something, and they blitz into it, okay, but you got a fourth down. Now you got to come up with your best two-point play you, you ever had because it's critical at this point. You have to show it. You have to get it done. And you do the one thing other than take a knee that you can't do and throw it out of bounds. I mean, I, you know, those, I, I, I struggle with that a little bit, and to me those are just those are situations, whether it's us not having a spring or whatever, but to me – I think you simplify the playbook a little bit, and then you got to get a little creativity in there because we're just not able to move guys out of the way. Uh, I'm just wondering now uh, the unraveling of this year has opened up a whole nother uh, line of questioning of how long is it, how much is this setting the program back? I mean, if anybody thinks they're going to be ranked in the top 10 or, or even 20 next year, uh, you don't have a quarterback in the program, at least to me, it doesn't look like you, you have uh, that position solved. I, I think there's all, uh, you know, the scab has been torn off and it's bleeding yeah. and they need more than a Band-Aid. Ouch, that's well, ugly. I think, I think this so too, Neil. I think that as, as quick as it went south in a year like this, I think you start off hot next year. I think you start erasing a lot of the a lot of the wrongs of 2020. And you know, I I feel like if they can they can get a guy signed, a, 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 an elite quarterback. And and look, those guys. I, look, I got a lot. I give a lot of credit. Those guys are D1 athletes. They're really good. I mean, it, it is what it is. But you know, you turn on some of these games. You got elite quarterbacks out there. They're the teams that are knocking on the door or in the playoffs every year. What I mean, are you going to sell what, him that he can run 20 times up the middle? Well, hey, you know, you get look. You get a guy. You only need one. One will turn it around. I mean, we got Mike Robinson. You know, Mike, Mike was, you know, what a great player he was, but that was so different than what Joe would always put out there. Joe, Joe never had running quarterbacks, you know, and, 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 and there, there goes Mike that ends up being a running back in the NFL. <laughs> There's so something. I just, you know. Well, let me throw this at you, Joe, because you, you were in the program. You know mm -hmm. what it's like. But at, at some point, do you have these guys in practice actually play against legit competition, meaning open them up to being hit? And I know that's dangerous, but they clearly can't hold on to the ball. Quarterback, Neither quarterback. quarterback yeah, the, the, the quarterbacks. I mean, at least I, some element of contact in practice. Yeah. So they're used to that when the game starts. I mean, the number well, of turnovers these guys have had, what, what, what are you losing? Are you going to be any worse than 0-5 yeah. if, and, if you and, did that? And I understand what you're saying. And, we, you know, obviously when – when when I played it was it, it looked way different. The game didn't look like this. It didn't you didn't have practice was different. Yeah. But to answer your question, normally quarterbacks do not take any kind of shots, and I don't think that's at any pretty much at any level. So I'm not exactly sure. I haven't really seen how Penn State. I mean, I, I've seen them practice before, but I I don't think that the I'm just saying normally you don't have uh, what 13, 14 and it's turnovers a good point. For, no, from your that, it, I mean it's right, it's, but that's it's also a good point. carrying over to their lack of tackling. Uh, you know, maybe the whole practice philosophy needs to be yeah. reevaluated. No, you know, Neil, you mentioned decision making. This was kind of a, a, a small part in the game. Uh, Adra Clifford comes in, he throws that touchdown pass. They get down 31 13. There's like 18 minutes of total time left, and he sends out the extra point squad. I'm like, you're down 18. You kick the extra point, you're only going to be down 17. Still a three score game. And I think James Franklin is awesome for the culture. He's a great recruiter, but in game, he just doesn't get it with game management. I, I, you, know, you see it week after week. Just he can't push the right buttons, and like that probably wouldn't have made it. You difference. thought they should go for two right there? Yeah, because you, you only, you're, who knows how many possessions you're going to get. You don't know how good your offense is today. Is Iowa really going to give up, you know, three more scores? I mean, I think, you, I think just he, I don't I don't think he has a good feel for the game. You know, and you see it week after week. It's not just you know yesterday. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but. You know, you know, I you know, see stuff on Twitter, not just from fans who are upset, but I see other people who are covering the game. They're just shocked as to, you know, some of the decisions that he'll make week in and week out. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't I, know if well, you're, you're right, that. because yeah. they had the extra point blocked. Yeah. Right. Well, well, <laughs> exactly. But I said, even if he makes that, yeah. you're down 17. Like, you're, go, well, you're, you're down three scores, and you scored to go down still three scores. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's one of those things, you, you make it good for you, you don't, you know, what are you doing type thing. And, I, and, and again, right. I, but I, I understand, I think that's fair, and I think James has come out on several cages, occasions on uh, interviews afterwards and said, hey, <clears throat> that's a fair question, you know, and, and I think he's, he's manned up to those. I don't, I don't think that satisfies people other than saying, hey, you know, 
we got to fix it and and maybe n not get it fixed. But I think that's fair. Well, you know, the went, funny thing is though is that when <laughs> they when they went for the two point conversion, they got it right. Yeah, right. So yeah. when you go back to the fourth and two, had this, they yeah. had they run that play, <laughs> <laughs> maybe we wouldn't be talking about all this right now. Depends on what Iowa did defensively, I guess. You know, <laughs> absolutely. They still came down and cut it to ten points with ten minutes to go, and then they failed in the clutch. Yeah. Right. So again, when they got to a clutch moment, when mm -hmm. it was time to win or at least get it to a one score game, they couldn't do it. All right, coming up next, we've had multiple quarterback changes now during the year, so who gets the nod going forward? We'll discuss all of that next. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime on WTAJ, your Nittany Nation station. Tonight's show is brought to you by Joel Comfort Toyota. Think you know FanDuel? Well, what if we told you that we've got an ace up our sleeve? Introducing FanDuel Casino. Now you can play casino games like blackjack, roulette, and online slots for real cash right from your FanDuel Sportsbook app. So when we say there's more ways to win on FanDuel, you can take that to the bank. New casino players, play your first 24 hours risk-free on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Get up to $200 back. Martin Oil Company delivers more than home heating oil, they deliver warmth. For over 50 years, your friends and neighbors have trusted Martin Oil for prompt delivery of premium heating oil. Call when you want fuel or enjoy the peace of mind that comes with automatic delivery. Whether your needs are residential or commercial, Martin Oil is always professional and reliable. Now Martin Oil's $1,000 Club for Heating Oil customers can earn you 3% interest plus deep discounts on fuel oil prices. Martin Oil Company, dependable as sunrise. Okay, we've researched our Medicare options, and now it's time to choose. Well, we know we want access to PMC. Right, and no copays for preferred generic drugs. Mm. And zero dollar monthly premiums. Right, plus an allowance for healthcare products. Mm -hmm. UPMC health plan. That was easy. Huh. Here's the plan that makes choosing Medicare coverage no choice at all. UPMC Health Plan. Fairlife is milk that gives you more. It's ultra filtered for 50% more protein and 50% less sugar. This holiday, bring more to the table with Fairlife Ultra Filtered Milk. Thanksgiving is our favorite holiday. I love family, I love food. Oh no, it's burning! Yes, it's kind of crazy, but we're together as a family. That's what's important. Teach. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. All right, welcome back to the show. Last week when we came on, Will Levis seemed like he was poised to lead Penn State for the rest of the year, and that lasted about two and a half quarters. Mark, you're James Franklin right now. Who do you go to the rest of the year, or at least next week against Michigan? I think they have to pick one guy and, and stick with it and hope that you're able to establish that through these final however many games. I'm not at practice, but I would say based on what we've seen, uh, I would go back to Clifford at this point and see if maybe you could generate some things. The picks he threw in this game weren't great, but they weren't as bad as some of the other stuff uh, that we've seen. But I think in these last three regular season games and the crossover game, you have to pick somebody. Uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, the Roberson kids banged up. It would have been interesting to see if they would have given him a look. Uh, but I think you're, you're, it's between these two guys. And at this point, give Clifford cr credit for coming in. You know, he, he, he took being benched in, in the proper way, came out and produced when he needed to. But then again, the, the turnovers popped up. But I think he's, I, I hate to say it, it's the lesser of two evils. Yeah, I think they need somebody who uh, still has some eligibility left. It's Chad Krell. Nice. Uh, I'm trying to think of a guy that never really got a chance. Now, you know what? I, I would give Levis another shot. I don't think he's had a full... I want, I want to see what he can do because I think you've got to think beyond this year as well. I mean, Clifford has had, uh, what, about 15, 13, 14 starts now. Um, he did play well in reserve role. If Levis doesn't do it in the first half, you have Clifford. You know he can move the team, be a leader. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see a little more uh, from him, you know, and more of a... And quit running him up the middle every other play <laughs> well, and see if he can So pass. the deciding vote, one last, Clifford, one so, Levis. Well, I'll, ma I'll, make, I'll make it easy. But, Thank you know, you so think about this. Last year, uh, Clifford's 11-2, and two, okay? But it, what, what I'm thinking and you're looking for something different, some kind of spark, you know, at practice, 
if it were me, I think I would go and say, listen, we're going to have create two different package scenarios, and you're both going to play. And just whoever gets a hot hand just keeps on going. I mean, to me, I, I, don't, I don't see a real – some people don't say I don't like the two-headed quarterback type situation, but where we're at right now, maybe that's exactly what we need. Yeah, maybe the, it is. The one person who doesn't like that two-headed quarterback situation is James Franklin. Right, right. But so it, I, it, I don't know again, if he would do that's it. That's right. But it, again, I mean, you look at it, that's exactly where we're at. I mean, Sean Clifford came in and threw two beautiful footballs yesterday in two throws and two touchdowns. I mean, you, you look at that and you're, you're thinking your pass game. I, I don't know. I, I just I think they both bring something a little bit different. I think you utilize them both. So you know, there you go. You know, yesterday during the game, I said Penn State might have, and I, I was speaking hyperbole, but I said they might have the best defensive line in the country and still might go 0 and 9. But you look at the guys like Jason Owe, you got Shaka Tony, and you got, uh, I believe, uh, Deza Isaac, you know, who had one of those uh, sacks yesterday where he just kind of stunted on the guy. But you, know, you look at at least that unit right there, and I feel like that's a unit you can always count on week in and week out. You know, maybe don't give them a short field, you know, two, three times a game and yeah. you know, maybe see what they can do. But, Mark, you've, you've been hyping Isaac all along. We saw it yesterday, and, you know, the announcers were really on him too. So, I mean, is that what you've been kind of just expecting to see out of him? Yeah, that, and I think we finally saw Shaka Tony return to the Shaka Tony that we saw for one series against Indiana. Uh, Jason Owe has the talent. I would disagree a little bit, Jack. I don't think they've been necessarily consistent in getting pressure on quarterbacks. And when you're facing the kind of kids that, that Penn State faced against uh, Maryland, young quarterback, Nebraska, young quarterback, this guy at Iowa has been struggling all year. Mm -hmm. They finally got some pressure on one of these quarterbacks, yeah. and I think you saw what it ended up doing for the entire defense. Listen, we could nitpick about what the defense gave up early in the game, but overall, yeah. I think you take that effort and hope that your offense isn't given, you know, turning it over. Well, giving them 24. short fields, yeah. putting their backs against the wall. I mean, Neil puts out a good article every week that I love to oh, read. Come so on, much. I, I, I'd be, I'm You're the very, person who reads that. Very, <laughs> very honest. I, I love it. He's very honest in it, and I, I really enjoy it. I look forward to it every week, but he'll let you know where everybody's at. I mean, and but I agree. I mean, I think there's – there's guys out there that are really good on that defense. I think Brandon Smith, once he gets into position, and I don't mean that, I, I mean the, the position he, he should be playing inside, yeah. okay? He's going to be an All-American. Uh, all He's very, very good. And, and oh, and those guys, I think defensive line, I think they all show signs. It's just, you know, collectively haven't been able to put it together because of the positions they've been put in. All right, coming up next. One final segment, two story programs meeting the big house next week, and they're both having very forgettable years. So who comes out on top? Prediction time. That's next. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime on WTAJ, your Nittany Nation station. Tonight's show is brought to you by Joel Comfort Toyota. Come on. Boy. Let's go. Come on, let's go in. <laughs> Toyota Thon is on. Tis the season for great year end deals. Buy a new 21 Venza now with 750 cash back, or lease a 21 RAV for a low 229 a month, or buy one and take 1,000 cash back from Toyota. Don't miss out. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. The Starkey Livio hearing aids interface right with my iPhone. I find that this has helped tremendously when I'm conversing with clients over the phone. I know there's a lot of hearing aids out there. I know you see them on TV. They cannot be as versatile as the Starkey. I've only had Starkey, but I've on my second or third different model in those 14 years. I've been very happy every time. We service all brands, no matter where you bought your hearing aid. Call for an appointment or curbside assistance. There's something that's missing, and uh, I want to tell you that that something missing is, is Jesus. It was the beginning of a road of redemption for me. There's forgiveness, there's a new life, there's everything in trusting God. Just take that one step, that's all it takes. I felt like a new person, brand new creation. I felt like I had had a weight lifted off my shoulders. Watch The 700 Club, weekdays. May your 
holidays glow bright and all your dreams take flight. Visit your local Mercedes-Benz dealer today for exceptional lease and financing offers at the Mercedes-Benz Winter Event. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. And welcome back to the show. All right, let's take a look at our updated to the date. Nitwit of the year standings, Neil Rudell getting mm. in the win column as the only person to take Iowa last week. So congratulations, Neil. Michigan. <laughs> I'm not accepting the congratulations <laughs> after that. Wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that guest got to be mine, right? No, I believe that was, was uh, Tyler Donahue. Tyler Donahue. Okay. Tyler Donahue All right. Our, I was going to, okay. So Penn State <laughs> opens up as a underdog to Michigan. Michigan barely escaping an upset at Rutgers uh, last night. Neil, what do you got? You're the reigning yeah, nitwit of the week. Michigan so. looked like they cared somewhat last night, and they can score. I think the only chance for Penn State to hang in this uh, would be a lower scoring game. So I'm going to say um, Michigan 26, uh, Penn State 21. Yeah, I'll go next. You know, Penn State has struggled out at the big house, even when it's had good teams. And I know this Michigan State, there, this Michigan team, excuse me, uh, is not very good this year. But again, you you talked about you know they, they showed some signs against Rutgers. Looks like they've they've settled in with a quarterback, right. which Penn State hasn't done. So I will go Michigan uh, 34, Penn State 21. Mm. Okay, yeah, I mean I saw I was watching that game as well last night. I, I did see that they they put that, uh, that that quarterback in. He did a good job, uh, you know, handled it well. You know, I, I just, I, I still see Penn State has is, is got a lot of great players. I know we have some great coaches on that staff. Um, I'm, I'm going to go uh, Penn State 38, uh, Michigan 30, 35 Ooh. in an overtime game. Wow, All nice. Right. Yeah. All right, and I'm going Michigan 21, Penn State 20. I, I get, like, it's, like we said last week, I, you got to show it to me before I pick you again, Penn State. So for Mark, Neil, Joe, I'm Jack. Hopefully, hopefully, we say this every week, but we <laughs> hope we're celebrating a Penn State win next week. If not, we'll see you back here same time next week.